can you remind me with the difference between mood and the uh, tone? Yes, uh, tone is the author's attitude towards the subject. And what's the author's attitude above? What? What's the author's attitude or what's the tone above? Yes, uh, uh, she is amazed by the Very beautiful. good. The tone is one of amazement. And do we as readers share the same mood? Yes. Very good. Very good. Good afternoon, Muhammad Rafala. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Habib. Okay, Muhammad. Uh, we were uh, we were answering question eleven. What does the language and level of details reveal about the author's point of view towards the Beatles? And we said that uh, uh, the author is actually amazed or impressed by the Beatles, and even us as a re as readers share the same feelings. So the mood and the tone are similar. That's one of amazement and um, uh, imp um, and impressed. All right. Okay. And Mazid even cited uh, evidence from the text of, uh, to support his answer. Uh, he says how absolutely amazing in six pieces in which mother and father care for their young children. And this is, uh, of course. Uh, culminates the uh, more surprising details uh, that she has already given to us in the paragraph. All right, so uh, let's move on. Uh, Mazin, can you read the answer to this question quickly? Yes, the use of language such as, uh, and this really blew my mind away. Yeah, if, How absolute... if, remember, this is uh, a casual language. If something yes. blows your mind away, what does it mean? Amazes you. Yes, yes, very good, very good. So does it support your answer, Mazin? Yes. Yes, very good. And when she says, uh, how absolutely uh, amazing. Yes. Does it support your answer? Yes. yes. Very good. How about the punctuation marks? I'm gonna add to your answer, Mazin, punctuation marks. Yes, like so ellipses. support. Yeah, mm. what, what, are, what are ellipses? What's ellipses? These are three dots, like this. Yes. Okay. In between words, in the second line, hair, uh, hair, and then uh, and then coat it with. Uh, and why? Why do you think the author? Uh, because what do the ellipses here uh, highlight or mark? I forgot to discuss this with you. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. What do they highlight or high uh, or, or mark, Muhammad Al Rafa? Yes. You know, when you do, you do you guys have you heard? Do you know what happens to you when you are so impressed, so amazed that you you get lost for words? Yes. Yeah, you're what speechless. what when you're speechless? Very good. I love you, Muhammad Rafa. I love you. Very good. So these ellipses, uh, while writing something, uh, uh, highlight this kind of uh, 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 lost for words or kind of uh, when somebody is lost for words. So these ellipses uh, uh, highlight this. So this is also, this is also show, this also, so, sorry, this also shows us how amazed she is that she got speechless, she got lost for words. All right, love? Do you uh, understand this, Mazin? This yes. is very important. So sometimes the ellipses uh, uh, highlights missing parts. You know, when, when you, for example, you are, re uh, transcribing something and you you didn't hear properly what he said so you you you, you put el these ellipses uh, these ellipses uh, when you have a quotation for example when, when you are citing a quotation and you don't want to continue you brought uh, you brought up only the important parts of the quotation and the, the other parts are not very important so you add ellipses and also ellipses when uh, the person is uh, uh, lost for words is lost mm. for words, all right? Word. So, mm. yeah, very good. Here, and then coat it with, uh, you see, secretion. Mm. Yeah, why? Because she is so excited. When somebody is so excited, he gets, he gets lost or he becomes lost for words. Have you got my point, boys? Yes. yes. I, hope, I hope I had I have made myself clear. Okay, so, Mohamed um, Rafa. Oh, that's a very big question, man, for you. And I'm sure you're good enough for it. Sorry. Thank you. 
uh, Goodall begins this argument by connecting to her audience. Yeah. Uh, acknowledgement. Do you remember like, connecting to her audience? What do we mean by connecting to her audience? Try, uh, to, try to engage. So, yeah. To engage them and uh, to relate. Very, very good. To to give them some kind of uh, images or even figurative language or even the kind of language that they can relate to. Yes. If you know what I mean. So, for example, if I'm trying to uh, describe uh, a kind of fruit that I bought, like for example. Uh, five or six months ago and I don't remember the name of the fruit and I'm gonna be like oh you know it looks like a lemon uh, but a big lemon with uh, a, 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 thick, a thick skin so what did I do to, to, to help you connect to what I'm, um, I am talking about I used uh, similar here because I compared the, the fruit that I talked about uh, that I was talking about to the lemon right Hamoudi so this is how our authors help the readers to connect. Sometimes you use the same language that your reader, for example, if you are talking to an Egyptian person and you want to connect to him. So you are going to use the Egyptian version of Arabic. Why? Why would you do this? Or I, as an Egyptian who lives here in Saudi Arabia, when I speak to you in Arabic and I use the Saudi language, the Saudi dialect, why would I do this? I try to connect to you. I try to engage you to what I'm saying. You see what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Some people say this is a way of something which is called assimilation, but assimilation is something different. Assimilation, when you use the same dialect as the people you are talking to, you try to assimilate you to be to be to assume to be a part of the group. But this is a very different thing. All right. Here we, we were talking about engaging your listener or engaging your reader. So you, when you use the casual language. When you use like uh, uh, when you use uh, like uh, uh, the kind of language that uh, reveals a great sense of humor, for example, you see what I mean, Mohammed? Yes. Yeah. This is how some authors connect by using figurative language, by using casual language, by using humor. This is how you you engage your listener uh, or reader even. Uh, do you have any other strategies, boys, or techniques? Do you remember any? Because uh, they kind of slipped my mind. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about humor, we're talking about casual language, we're talking about uh, figurative language, we're talking about also, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, one, uh, another, uh, another way is uh, not to use uh, sophisticated uh, uh, style of writing. You know what's sophisticated? Mm -hmm. I like long and uh, long, difficult vocabulary and long sentences. Instead, you use short sentences and simple vocabulary. This is another way to engage your reader. So how many, how many techniques have we used so far? Can you summarize, Mazin? Yes, uh, yeah. the figure. Figurative language, very figurative good. Like language. use metaphor, simile, idioms, even idioms, yeah? Yes. When she says, uh, uh, blew my mind. This is an idiom, yeah. by the way. This is not like a uh, uh, regular language. This is an idiom. An idiom is one of the, the figurative language uh, devices. Yes, very good. So you're talking about uh, figurative languages, Mazin, whether it is, uh, uh, be it uh, similes, be it metaphors, be it idioms. You see what I mean? Yeah, very yes. good. Yeah, and then else? use the uh, sophisticated uh, language. Yeah, very good. Using simple language rather than using sophisticated, using simple uh, sentences, simple uh, vocabulary, rather than using uh, scientific, sophisticated uh, language. Very good. Yeah. Yes. And uh, right. yes, using the casual. Uh, using casual language, like the language, the language you use uh, uh, every day with the friendly language also and using a friendly tone, even the yes. tone. If you're using a friendly tone, you connect to your reader. You see what I mean? Yes, mm. very good. All right. Uh, and even when you, uh, uh, when you admit counter argument, uh, like uh, uh, an opposing point of view, you engage your reader. Uh, as if you say, as if you say, Muhammad, have you got my point here? As if you're saying, yes. I respect, yeah, I know that you think uh, this and that, but I, oh, and I respect what you say, 
but I have a different point of view. This is another way to engage your reader and not to have him, uh, uh, to, to, to bring him to your side rather than have him as a foe or as an opponent. You see what I mean? Yes. Yeah, this is another way. Sorry, this has kind of slipped my mind previously. Yeah, very good. How else? Mm. Yeah. Uh, a good, uh, good album begins the segment by connecting to our audience. Acknowledging yeah. by co connecting to our audience. Yeah. Uh, acknowledging people's fears. Yes. Regarding insects. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I pointed out l l last, if you still remember. If you acknowledge yeah, the fears, if you acknowledge yeah, the counter argument, and you say, well, I know that there is uh, this and that, and I respect what you think, but I'm going to refute it for you and prove you wrong in a very polite and respectful way. Have you got uh, this point, boys? Yes. Yes, very good. Uh, now, she makes another connection by describing a familiar relationship. Yeah. One between a parent and a child. Yes. This is how people connect when you use uh, this comparison. When you compare uh, how uh, insects care for their ba uh, larvae, you compare them to parents. And of course, every everybody knows how caring and, uh, and caring and what else caring and very uh, interested and how, how uh, kind, caring and kind parents are, right? Mm. I bet nobody, nobody uh, there is nobody who doesn't know how it feels to be a son and how it feels to be a parent. Yes, very good. Yes. Uh, identify how the peaceful parents are similar to human parents. Yeah, according to Goodall, of course. Yes, Muhammad. Uh, I think that... Uh, they similar to human parents they also teach their young yes uh, very good survive very and good and even feed them, okay. them. Yes. and okay. i have never i have never actually until uh, in, until i have read this article i have never heard uh, about insects feeding their babies uh like in their mouths see what i mean have you heard yeah. about insects doing this no i heard about birds uh even yeah i heard about birds i heard i heard about animals but for insects yeah i don't know yeah okay so that's absolutely right dr muhammad so beetles parents work together to care for their young as human parents do yeah all right uh dr mazin yeah read number 14 please why does Godal suggest Godal? yeah Godal suggests this compare Comparison between the people. Actually, the actually, the heading of the previous question tells us why would she uh, suggest this comparison? Use this comparison to help us to connect very good to the, her reader and help uh, help uh, engage the readers into what she is talking about. Very yeah. good, Doctor Mazen. Very good. Yeah. Yes. If uh, readers find common links with the Beatles. Such yes, as yes. the parents. Yes. Yes, Habibi, continue. Yes, such as uh, the parent ch uh, child relationship, they may be pers persuaded to agree with good, uh, with good old. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because if you can relate to what's happening here, and if you understand perfectly well what's going on, you can be convinced with the Godal's argument. All right? Mm. Yeah, that these insects are not uh, monsters, <laughs> right? And they, they are not our enemy. Yeah, all right. Dr. Muhammad, question 15. Dr. Muhammad? Yes. Question 15, love. Question 15, okay. Uh, how do the parents' beetles create sated young despite competition from flies? Yes, very good. Uh, yeah, you can refer. Have you got uh, the sheet handy? You can refer to the passage. Uh, no, sorry, I don't have the sheet right now. Okay, so I have to scroll up for you. Okay, love. Uh, can you spot uh, the word sate? How do they sate it? Sate. Yeah.
That's the way it's supposed to be. If you are sated, if you are, uh, Sorry. yeah, have you found the word? Yeah, here, here. And about two weeks, the sated beetle larvae burrow yeah, into the yeah. soil. What does okay. what does sated here mean? Um, I think hatched or something like. Uh, uh very good guessing, good guessing, but not uh, not correct. But wonderful guess. I love you. Very good, excellent, Habib. Uh, if you are sated uh, when it comes to food and stuff, that means you are stuffed. You are, you have had your uh, more than enough. You see, if you are sated, if you are sated with something, so you have enough of it. You got it, Hamoudi? Let me show you the uh, meaning in English, and maybe I can we can find uh, uh, more examples from the dictionary. All right, so. Uh, ah, yes. Sorry. Okay. I think the connection computer is very slow. Okay, look. So uh, let's go to Cambridge. Can you see my computer screen? Yeah. Great. Cool. Yes. Okay, so somebody or some uh, or something some animal is sated sated having had more of something yeah then you can easily have at one time so yeah like if you are full full when it comes to food yeah so this is a very good definition yeah this this is exactly what i'm looking for for so if you are sated with drink or food that means you are full or you have had more than enough you see what i mean yeah. uh uh, I wonder with, whether this is a scientific word or uh, just uh, used in every day. Uh, uh, another word is uh, replete, but this is formal word. And stuffed is an informal word. And it doesn't tell whether this is informal or formal. Yeah, so that's what I, I was looking for. So this word is a bit formal. So as if, uh, as if uh, the, the, the author here is uh, switching between uh, formal language and casual language and informal language. You know what I mean, yeah? yeah. But even the word, uh, even the word "sated" is not that big word or difficult word to uh, memorize or learn, right? Mm. Okay. So let's get back uh, to "sated." To have more than enough, I think my definition is very easy uh, than the dictionary, or to be full, yeah. Okay. Yes. So uh, uh, the question was, Doctor Muhammad. Yes. Okay. Because sometimes I feel like you, you get disconnected. Uh, how do the parents, beetles, create sated young despite competition from flies? What do they do with flies to get rid of flies so that they keep uh, their children sated? We learned about this yesterday, if you still remember. Because normally flies, what do flies uh, and other insects do? They lay their eggs into the, the dead bodies or the yes. carcass or the carrion. What, uh, but if these uh, eggs, if these eggs or those eggs actually, if those eggs hatch, what's gonna happen? Um, the flies are gonna eat? Uh, yes. Yeah, very good. Yes, yeah, very good. The, the stashed or the, the stocked uh, flesh, right? So what yes. do the beetles do so that they have no competition with their children? They eat this, uh, these eggs, all right? Right, mm -hmm. Dr. Muhammad? So they carry on their bodies tiny orange mites uh, that feed on uh, the fly eggs uh, and maggots, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, they carry mites. They use the help of mites, and these mites uh, help them. It's like, uh, you know, what's, what, what do they call it in biology? They carry on their bodies, tiny orange mites. Yeah, like the these mites, uh, this kind of mutual uh, benefit. Uh, mutualism. What's, 
mutualism. mutualism. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was looking for the biology word. Yeah, sorry, sorry guys. Kind of slipped. So I remember the word mutual, but I forgot mutualism. Yes, very good. Mutualism. So they carry uh, the mites. And these mites, what do they, these mites do? They eat the eggs of flies and maggots. Why? So that these eggs don't hatch because if they hatch, they are going to have a competition to, uh, that is going to compete them with the food they have stashed. Mm. All right. So, uh, Mazen, question 16. Yes. An odium is an expression with a meaning of, uh, other than its literal meaning. Cite an, an idiom in the above excerpt and define, and define it. Yeah, give me like, the meaning, uh, I mean. Yes, like when you said the, the human mind. The way. Very good. This is an idiom. And what does it mean? That uh, she is uh, like amazed or impressed by Surprised it. or impressed. Very good. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. That's it. Habibi. Wonderful. Dr. Muhammad? Yes. Uh, question 17. Why do you think Goodall uses this idiom? Yeah. Yes, you create the tone. Yeah? Yes. We talked uh, about the create... tone earlier, yeah. To show us how? Uh, how uh, she was amazed by Very it. Very good. How amazed that she, wa she is or she was. Very good. Excellent. I'm so proud of you boys. Very good. So can you read the answers? Uh, the answer for us, Hamoudi? Yes. Uh, Gidal's use of this idiom relates to her point of view. She approaches the animal world with a sense of wonder and a desire to learn. Yes, that's exactly, uh, absolutely right. And your answer is also uh, right, Dr. Muhammad. Uh, Mazin, question yes. 18. Yes, can you think of other idioms that have similar meaning? Yeah, like uh, yeah, like uh, you are amazed, like uh, blow my mind. Yeah, exactly. Uh, similar meaning. I, yeah. a, a similar idiom. A similar idiom with a similar with a, with a similar meaning. Meaning. Yes, like uh, it's out of this world. Yes, excellent, very good. Or knock my socks off. If somebody mm -hmm. knock uh, knock uh, knocks your socks, uh, if some somebody or something knocks your socks off, uh, that means it surprises you. Took my breath away. My breath away. If somebody takes your breath away, that means it's also amazing. Breathtaking. Mm -hmm. Another word. Uh, out of this world. Mind blowing. <laughs> Drop a bombshell. Uh, jaw drops. Uh, struck dumb. Yeah. So all these are idioms uh, that have uh, the same meaning of uh, amazement. All right. So uh, that's it, gentlemen. Uh, Alhamdulillah, and this is the end of our uh, curriculum, Alhamdulillah. Uh, we have reached to the end of uh, uh, that, that presentation classes. At, inshallah, starting from next week, we're going to start the uh, review. Uh, we are going to review the grammar uh, lessons. We're going to review the reading lessons, of course, at the study notes also. And we're mm -hmm. going to also re review the writing and uh, uh, I'd be more than happy if I received uh, your work when it comes to writing because Anthony actually didn't give the time to review the writing, especially your work, Mazen, because I made a comment on your work because it lacked some uh, grammatical and structure. It has some grammatical and structure issue and I promised to review it with you, but I kind of lost it. Can you uh, write it uh, uh, on Word, uh, an on Word document file, Mazen, and send it to me so that we can discuss it next class, inshallah? Yes, okay. Okay, thank you. And you, Dr. Muhammad? Yes. Uh, I'm waiting for uh, something from you. Okay, inshallah. So that we can discuss it together. Okay, so don't okay. forget to use uh, support, elaborate, or uh, explain. Uh, and uh, then evidence or uh, example, all right? Do you remember this method I taught to you? Yes. Yeah, all right. Have a very good day, boys. Thank you, Mr. Any questions before we leave? Uh, no, thank you. No. Can you read the class, please? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Have a very good weekend. See you.